Welcome back, it's Dr. Somji. And Dr. Solomon. Today we're going to be demystifying or just like educating people on what the difference between AHA versus BHA is. Okay, so I think it's best to start with what actually AHA and BHA stands for. So essentially AHA stands for an alpha hydroxy acid and BHA stands for beta hydroxy acid and that just refers to the chemical structure of the acid as you can see in this diagram that we'll just put up now. Absolutely, so AHAs are water soluble. They help dissolve the outer layer of the skin. So when we get too much skin formed within that area, a dead skin layer where your skin looks like a little bit more dull, not so healthy, it reveals brighter, fresher skin. So what sort of examples um, do you know of like AHA, AHAs that people So AHAs commonly ones I use for example, glycolic acid. Um, this is something that we both use as uh, exfoliant face washes. We use it as a serum, as, uh, occasionally as creams as well. So it helps cut through that top layer of skin. Um, it's good for sort of penetrating the outer layer of skin. And um, again, for like acne prone skin. Acne prone skin, hard, dry skin. It's um, probably a bit more, like I don't recommend glycolic acid for my skin type. So darker skin types, you can sometimes get a little bit more irritation with glycolic yeah. acid. You can end up with a little bit more pigmentation, but mainly for a kind of lighter skin types with acne prone skin, uh, it can help pigmentation in some skin types as well. Uh, for lighter skin types. So you've got to be careful with glycolic acid. It's a great serum from the elephant, uh, from Drunk Elephant, uh, which is very, very useful. Um, and it's quite nice just for a light little bit of exfoliation. You've also got on the other end of the spectrum, something for sensitive skin. So you've got lactic acid. Yeah. When would you use lactic acid? Well, lactic acid you use, for example, at lower concentrations when your skin is particularly uh, prone to redness, prone to inflammation, like rosacea. rosacea. Skin that might be inflamed, such as in psoriasis, in eczema, um, and skin that just happens to be more sensitive to products. A lot of type 1 skins as well that might be particularly sensitive. So like type 1, Dr. Solomon is referring on the Fitzpatrick scale just to a paler skin type that tends to burn very easily and it's very, very pale. Within AHAs, one of the, my favourite AHAs, has always been my favourite AHAs, is mandelic acid. Mandelic acid. <laughs> mandelic acid is a great acid to use in all skin types. Every skin um, type. It's, it's excellent, again, for cutting through that uh, top layer of skin. Um, preparing the skin for other treatments, um, helping with redness, reducing inflammation, yeah. pigmentation, also reducing the bacterial load on the skin. Um, overall, just a good skin cleanser and exfoliator. And importantly, again, all skin types, even in sensitive skin, mandelic acid is actually used to treat sensitive skin, to treat redness and to treat inflammatory skin conditions. Absolutely, you've also got malic acid, tartaric acid, and yeah. citric acid, where that's pretty a lot, quite a lot mild. You get on Paula's Choice HA BHA serum, you'll get these type of acids put in yeah. in conjunction with the big boys like sort of glycolics and stuff. Yeah. Um, same with the ordinary. So, you know, the concentration of those other types of HAs are a little bit lower. Um, but I definitely think um, when you look at the Inculus Mandelic acid treatment, I do like that for all skin types. I find that the ordinary HA BHA needs to be used correctly. There is another video on our channel talking about how to use that correctly and also on all of our social media, Dr. Somji Skin. Um, but I think if you're gonna start off with an AHA for dry, dehydrated skin, your best bet is mandelic acid. If you're a lighter skin type and you've got acne, you've got a little bit more pigmentation associated with it, then glycolic acid is a good one to start with. And if you've got super, super sensitive skin, then you can really go through the ordinary formulations with lactic acid. Yeah. Let's talk about BHAs. What yeah. is the most common BHA? And in fact, probably the only BHA that we use in clinic. Yeah, it's salicylic acid. I yeah. mean, you're hard pressed to find something that's really used a lot within like kind of daily skincare and, and dermatology uh, when you're looking at BHA, but they're oil-based. So it's very different from water-based AHAs and they physically exfoliate and unclog pores. So say if you've got what we call retentional acne, so very like open and closed comedones, a lot of congestion with the skin, a lot of oiliness within the skin, it's really important to be introducing a BHA into the skin. So um, what are the sort of benefits that you see from BHA? So BHA is the one, the most common one I use being the salicylic acid. I, I use it to cut through, let's say for example, pigmented skin, harder skin, acne prone skin. Part of the formulation, a lot of the acne preparations that we use, um, peels, creams, serums. So, even cleansers, right? Cleansers so as well. For, for acne prone skin, salicylic acid is fantastic. If you're if you're somebody that gets sort of oily skin or like combination skin, you might be wanting to use a salicylic acid preparation um, just to reduce the amount of sebum that you produce. 
which is fantastic. And we know that CeraVe have got their SA Renewing Cream, which is great to be used on the body. So for example, if you've got back knee, um, and you produce a lot of oil in the back for someone like me, then it's great to apply like a nice salicylic acid mask to that area yeah. as well. So, you know, there's a lot of things that you can use salicylic acid for, but in most kind of like combo serums, you'll have salicylic acid in there. And it's one of the most important things um, that you can have within, within your serum. Yeah, I'd say it's an acid you'll find in almost every single skin preparation. Yeah, I mean, we do chemical peels of salicylic acid like 30, 40%. Yeah. One of the important reasons why you'd use salicylic acid as a cleanser or we'd use that separately if you've got a salicylic acid formulation is that say if you've got painful cystic acne and you're really sensitive and you're in a lot of pain in that area you can use a salicylic acid wash or a serum before you, you introduce your AHAs um, which may sting you and the reason why is because salicylic acid is made up of something that we work, that we know and love, right? Yeah, in fact, what happens is the salicylic acid uh, metabolizes to salicylate, and that's what that little sort of frosted layer that you see on the skin is. And salicylate, we otherwise know as? As aspirin. aspirin so, yeah. you know, it's the same family as aspirin. It's not, I guess it's not exactly the same. Not exactly but, the same, but it, but it, it provides it, pain relief on indeed. the surface of the skin. So if you've got especially painful um, kind of cysts and spots, doing putting a little bit of salicylic acid serum on, on those spots, we're gonna give you some relief. So that's our AHA BHA 101, just so that you know absolutely everything. We've given the recommendations yep. below what we'd recommend for AHA BHA, as well as blends, different skin types, which ones to use, as well as links to my AHA BHA comparison, where I compared Paula's Choice versus Ordinary, which one's better for your skin type. I think that's really very useful. If you've got any more questions about any of these kind of exfoliating acids or any other skin concerns, just let us know in the comments below. Both myself and Dr. Solomon try and personally reply to every message uh, for now, um, just because we're really like kind of passionate just about providing just good skin knowledge um, and demystifying things in skincare, which you can find on social media, which is not good and misleading. So don't forget to subscribe, click that bell, just to be notified about any new videos. Join the community and um, here's to good skin health. Thank you.